Two brothers are on a mission to rediscover raw foods in the wild. These are raw pinions, right? Did yes, please, them? please. And unearth ancient cooking techniques to solve the secrets to healthier living. Let me give it a try. All right. The world today is full of chemical processed foods. Well, we're going back into the root of Mother Nature to find these healthy foods that are available right around you. Saying healthy is a lifelong journey. Our passion is to find these raw ingredients out in the wild and share this knowledge with everyone. In this episode of Raw and Wild, Jim is in search of the elusive pinyon nuts. Oh, there's that lightning, man. While John hunts down an ancient cooking technique. We'll check on this, but it could take anywhere from 24 to 48 hours. Twin brothers, Jim and John Thomas, have been part of the family restaurant for over 50 years. Being raised in the, in the restaurant business, we've always eaten healthy food. Uh, both our grandmas were excellent cooks, and we always ate at home, always eating healthy food that was made from scratch. And we find the best way to stay healthy is finding natural raw ingredients. You can eat the seeds, you can eat the top of the plant, the flowering part. Eating the most natural foods that you can find and cook are very important because you're gonna eliminate the pesticides, the fungicides, the herbicides, and you're gonna have the natural ground that they grew in, so they're gonna have all the trace minerals and everything that the body needs to, to nourish it. Cooking up authentic New Mexican food using local ingredients, their goal is to create a fully sustainable menu for their customers. What a beautiful day out, It's huh? beautiful. You feeling lucky today? Oh yeah, I'm always feeling lucky. I better catch the first fish. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see about that. My twin brother and I are very competitive <laughs> when it comes to anything. Of course, I think I'm better at fly fishing, but we'll see today. Hopefully, I'll, I'll beat him. Um, I haven't seen him fish for a while, but I think I could beat him. <laughs> What I'm doing is let, letting the rod load up and getting some tension there, and then it fly. When I'm pulling back like that, I'm acting like it's a minnow going through the water there. My brother and I have been fishing down the river since we were six years old. Fly fishing just become natural for us. It takes a lot of your attention. You can't be worrying about work or stress. It's a great sport. Fly fish is an art and so is cooking. Fish on, Jim. That's a biggie. Let's see you bring him in. You don't have it till you bring him in. Good job. So this is great. This is a native brown. Look at the beautiful colors and spots on it. You can't buy that in the supermarket. Compared to farm raised, there's no comparison. Clean, fresh, succulent. Succulent. This brings back fond memories. We've eaten this fish all our life. It's a real light, flaky fish. Mom used to prepare this fish with cornmeal, tomatoes, but you know what, I'd like to try something different this time. You know, I know there's some ancient recipes that go way back using pinon nuts from here in New Mexico. Get some native recipe would be, would be great. Okay, let's go give it a try. While John searches for an ancient long-lost recipe, Jim's journey to discover more about the pinon nut has led him on a different path. I'm here in Gallup, New Mexico, and I'll be meeting up with a fellow by the name of Joe Tanner. He's the expert, supposedly, on pinons here. 
His family's been harvesting pinions, sounds like three or four generations, so I'm excited to meet this guy. Hopefully he'll be able to clue me in so I can go ahead and harvest some out in the wild. Hello, you must be Joe Tanner. Yes, sir, I am, thank you. Jim Thomas. Jim, pleased to meet you. Welcome to Tanner's. I understand you're the expert on pinions. If there is one, I guess I'm it. I'm at the right spot. Hope I have the answers for you. Come right along. Thank you. Come on back. This is where we uh, do our pinion storing. Down here where it's cool and dry, the temperature is perfect. It smells good, man. It smells like my <laughs> grandmother's it? house down in Old Messiah. The oldness. And History. Your family's been training pinions for how long? How many years? We've been doing it since 1890. My grandpa Joe, that I'm named after, was the first pinion enthusiast. These are raw pinions, right? Yes, I please, them? please. These pinions right here are, are five years old. Wow. How long does historians show that this uh, pinion has been used in traditional recipes here? Traditional recipes, I'm sure all New Mexico Indian communities have recipes that go back at least 500 years. Mm -hmm. So I guess that's, that's the best answer. Well, my brother and I just got back from doing a little trout fishing. And we're thinking this pinon could be something that could actually uh, enhance the flavor. Well, like the trout would be a wonderful idea. The pinon will bring an added taste that is only its own. What's the best way to harvest these pinions? The Native American discipline is they won't pick the pinion until Mother Nature shocks that cone enough that it wants to open up and that means Mother Nature's giving the gift. The way they do it comes from the tales of old, how the pinion has many times Save their 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 families from from it's starvation. Sacred. It is sacred to them. It is absolutely. Joe, thank you so much for all the information you shared in my quest for the famous pinon. Oh, you're on an incredible journey. Just enjoy. Be respectful of the land. My prayers are with you. Gracias. You bet. Brothers Jim and John Thomas are on a mission to find raw food in the wild and combine this with an ancient recipe to create healthier meals. John's journey has led him to a homestead of a family that has passed down indigenous recipes for generations. Hi, are you Sarah? I am. I'm John. Nice to meet nice you. Nice to meet you. You've done traditional recipes for years. I heard that your family has handed them down from hundreds of years ago. It's been passed down through my mom and my nana and my great grandparents. This is what I'm looking for. If you could help us, that'd be fantastic. Great, well, I'll show you how we do corn passed down from my family. We're gonna make some chicos. It's a corn that's been roasted overnight over a low fire and it can be used in several different ways. You can help me. Okay. We're gonna de-silk the corn, so we're gonna pull back the husk. And you'd want to take all the silk out? Yeah, you want to try and leave the husk on, okay. but you want to get as much of the silk off as possible. You're pretty good at that. Have you yeah, done this before? Well, I like processing food by hand. I do a lot of chili peeling, picking mushrooms, wild mushrooms. I just, this is what I enjoy really doing, and it just brings you back to nature, and it just, it's something that just makes you feel good. We're going to lay it directly on top of the Embers, which is why we have this protective coating on the I corn, see. the husk. Uh -huh. That will actually keep the corn from burning. Yes. And so you're retaining the flavors just by roasting it and drying it. Oh yeah, it brings it's... out a whole different flavor. It makes it into a dry good, a whole grain staple for your pantry. 
So our next step, we're gonna give it a quick dip in water to just get it some moisture so it doesn't burn directly on the coals and it has gets a nice steam to it oh, first. Oh, great. I'll just stick right in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, some. you could just do a few at a time. Uh-oh, John, you're slacking. There's what one happened? missing. Oh, okay. oh, is it? I didn't strip that one. Yeah, I'll do it. That's all right. I'm putting these coals here so we don't have them just on the bottom. We want to have heat on top and bottom so the corn cooks evenly. Okay. Now we have to get our burlap layer so we can protect the corn. All right. So it's going to be kind of a steaming process to slowly cook the corn. and Slowly, yeah. All righty, now we've got our next layer of burlap. It's like a little bit of a sandwich, so we can do our other um, layer of coals. Right on top of it like that. Right on top, just evenly over. Let me give it a try. All right. Does that look good? That looks great. It's nice to have a helper. We just gotta cover it with a little bit of dirt and great. have some patience. That's the hardest part for me. We're basically making an, an oven. This was a, a great way to cook a lot of food at once, and it took a long time, but you got great results. And now we have to wait till tomorrow morning? We'll check on this, but it could take anywhere from 24 to 48 hours. It's better to leave it longer than it is to pull it up too soon. The opposite of fast food. Exactly, the opposite of fast food. All righty, that looks pretty good to me. This water urn, it looks like it's something traditional. It's actually a Navajo pitch pot. They make it with local clay and then it's uh, burnt in an outside oven. So they actually cook in this pot? You can. First they had fire and this is the next generation. They made these pots so they can make stews and soups and cook their beans and the other things that they grew. This is probably the first utensil that man made for cooking. Yes, the evolution of cooking. So this is made from the local clay out of the river? Yeah, and so that's why you'll see variations in color as well. That's amazing, you learn something new every day. Jim's search for the elusive piñon nut has brought him to the mountains of northwestern New Mexico and to a local Navajo guide. How long have you been looking for piñons out here? Well, ever since I was probably about five years old, I went yeah. on my first piñon picking and we went up to the summit up, up on top of Wonder Rock. Mm -hmm. you know, at first I didn't know too much about how to pick piñons, but the darker they are, they got meat inside there. Yeah. The white ones are you don't have no meat in there at all. Well, there might be rabbit turds. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll be gathering these pinions from the ground. No yeah. climbing a tree, I understand. Right? No, 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 no the, shaking the tree. That's a taboo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to shake the tree, you know, get yourself all gummy and everything, you know. <laughs> Let's saddle up, bro. Let's go. Elani will be leading Jim up to 7,000 feet above sea level and across difficult terrain to where the pinion trees grow best. I'm enjoying this ride more and more. <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't realize it would be this difficult to find them. <laughs> Again, to some sacred pinion country. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> There's an old Navajo Indian area. You know, we cooked up this ancient dish. It's going to include trout and pinions, one of the crucial ingredients. So my twin brother's really counting on me to bring some back, man. We'll fill up that saddle bag before you know it, the end of really? the day. We're going to be going down in the bottom of this little ravine down here. It looks like it's quite a bit, you know. Pretty steep uh, there. Steep, and we got a lot of rocks in that there, so. We'll let the horses figure it out for themselves, but more or less, we'll get to the bottom of it pretty safe. Okay. No rush at all. Pinions aren't going nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> you got it. Come on. You got it, there we go. Up. Take it easy, no rush. There we go. That wasn't too bad, was it? No. 
We'll get down off here. Jim is on the hunt for wild ingredients for an ancient dish he and his brother John will be cooking. But deep in the wilderness, there is more than just pignon nuts. We'll be able to see a lot of wild animals up through here, maybe some elk tracks, a deer tracks, maybe a bear or two. Hey, look at that, like mountain lion tracks there. Wow, you can check it out real quick. Yeah, holy cow. I think I'll stay on my horse. Looks like it went from there. Never seen the tracks. Into here. Can you tell if that's a male or female? It's a female, definitely. And how female. can you tell? The bigger the paws are, went right up through there. I'll be circle around there and right up in through there. Might be looking for a rabbit or something. How old do you think the tracks are? I say about three hours. They're a little dried out, but. They're fresh yet, so it was early morning. So maybe that cat's stalking us. It might be. Good thing he brought the shotgun. Uh -huh. Well, they're probably looking at us, like when we're riding up, but they're all around us. Uh -huh. But the horse would really know once they sent that cat, mm -hmm. the ears would go up. He was acting a little strange here. Oh yeah, so Some's... she probably smelled it. Yeah, he got his head up, just kind of looked around and snorting. So we'll be cautious of going up. Okay. Into the canyons and that, coming out on the other side. Does this mean we're getting closer to the sacred pignon? I'm pretty sure we are. You know, I've been down this trail quite a bit, so we'll go through the canyon. We'll come out on the other side, and it, we'll, we'll start looking at more pignons. She ain't too happy about coming through this canyon. No. I think there's a cat around here after seeing tracks as fresh as that and the way yeah. the horses are acting. Absolutely. He might be right on our ass. And what better place for a cat to be, you know? I got your back. Is that cat's not gonna get us. Well, we'll soon be in that territory to pick pinions. We're just about there. Come on, let's go. Let's go. Got some pinyon trees here. Looks good. Well, this is the end of the trail, bro. This is where the pinyons are all at. Here we are, huh? These are the pinyons. Wow. We made it. We've done it. We made it to the promised land. There we go. We got to pick some before the storm heads on in. Whoa, there's that lightning, man. Here we go, whoa, whoa. Look at these things on, let's keep going. <laughs> Look at the rain. Hit it hard. I didn't bring a raincoat, did you bring one? <laughs> no. <laughs> Pinions sure are good. That's the only way you pick them, right? I understand you oh, pick yes. them only from the ground, none of them is shaking the tree. And you know they're ripe and ready to go. That's right. It's been a great day, man. Thank, Thank you very you. much. It was good Thank having you. with you. It is starting to come down a little bit, but uh, those horses can go pretty good. We'll get them galloping, get back in about half the time. After learning about an old Native American cooking technique, John has taken his quest to recreate an ancient recipe one step further. Well, I found some clay and talking to Sarah after seeing the pitch pot, it seems that they've used clay a lot through the years. So I have an idea of using this clay for uh, cooking the trout in. About a half bucket should do. I better get on my way. People will be arriving here shortly. Jim and John's cooking is always normally pretty impressive. So I've heard that they've been trout fishing and they're trying to recreate this ancient dish. And I'm very excited to try it. It's gonna be wonderful.
brothers Jim and John Thomas have collected all the ingredients to create an ancient recipe. But before they can cook it all up, there's a bit more prep to do. So I've got the uh, pinion nuts here, and I'm gonna go ahead and put some in the pan here, and we're gonna roast them up. They're gonna partake of much richer flavor after you roast them. This is a cast iron pan, no salt, no oil, just the pinions. It makes them a little more brittle, so they crack easier. You can also roast them in the oven, put them at about uh, 380 degrees. It shouldn't take too long, but maybe 15 minutes, and I'll be checking them periodically just to make sure that we don't burn them. These are the jewels of the Southwest here, these little pinions. Nice aroma. Brings back fond memories. I'm gonna make trays out of this to lay the fish in. The Indians have used this clay for years, and the directions that Sarah gave me about using the pot for cooking intrigued me. So this is gonna be interesting. Probably about six fish in each tray. I'm not sure how this is going to turn out, but I'm enjoying it. It's a lot of fun. These are about ready here. Oh yeah, they're done. See the brown there? That's roasted. And we're ready to start cracking. Oh, these are looking great. This is definitely a labor of love, but that's what food is. You got to have passion. <laughs> oh, they taste great. Wow. Now it's looking more like a pot. And then we're gonna layer another piece of clay on top of it, and that's gonna seal in the, the, the moisture from escaping the juices. And that with the um, pinions, it should be a delicious ancient meal. I'm gonna turn this over to the chef, and we'll put some trout in here, and we'll get ready for our dinner tonight. With Jim and John's work done, it's now down to the restaurant's head chef to put the ancient recipe together. All the ingredients that we have here are basic ingredients that we feel that was available centuries ago. We have salt here, and I've got some uh, fresh garlic that I chopped up coarsely. And then we have the roasted pinions and then honey. So uh, we're gonna make a, a basic uh, trout with this using also like corn husks we're gonna use as a, as a moisturizer in the bottom of the, the pan. I'm gonna put a little bit of butter in there too. It'll melt a little bit and give it some good flavor. So then I'm gonna take the trout, I'm gonna put a little bit of salt in the cavity, a little bit of uh, garlic, some pinion. I have some fresh honey that we have here too. Not a lot. The honey will add a little bit of sweetness to the pinion. It should taste pretty good. And I'm gonna put the, the clay top on here. Just lay it on top. Okay, Pat, this is there you go. the truth. How long do you think, about 30 minutes? 30 minutes, yeah. Right. And we'll go from there. Friends, are you ready to try some wild and raw ancient recipe? Yeah. And if it works out real well, we might even put it on the menu. It might be our new dish, who knows. <laughs> Cooked to perfection, look at this, wow. Oh, man. This has a native New Mexican pinions. Oh, that looks fantastic. So let's all dig in and enjoy. I think the clay keeps all the moisture inside, traps all the flavor, so it made it impressive. The texture of the fish was very flaky. It was amazing. It's very simple ingredients, but it became a very exotic dish. It was delicious, absolutely delicious. Well, I'll tell you what, this was quite an experience uh, going and making this ancient dish using you know, the indigenous raw ingredients from here in New Mexico and catching the wild fish and then cooking it and all that. We were very excited that uh, it turned out as well as it did. The fish came out excellent, the flavor was excellent, but next time we're gonna try to work on this clay dish better. But you know, you live and learn, and this is part of uh, the adventure of cooking in the wild and the raw. <laughs>